straight into it. So first of all, who is Fulton Hogan? So we are a horizontally diversified infrastructure company in Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. Um, it works in transport. Works logistics, in transport. Co Sorry, was that a, a comment question? Do I hear a voice then? I'll keep going. Transport, logistics, telecommunications, water, energy and defence. We're also vertically integrated in that we uh, we have our own resource extraction operations. Uh, we, we convert those materials into uh, building products through our materials manufacturing business. We then construct infrastructure assets and then maintain them and have an asset management business as well. So quite a diverse organisation. Our 88 year history has been a combination of organic growth and acquisitions. You can see in the, the graph there, that's our, our head count in the bars there. We've sort of doubled our head count from over the last 16 years from around 4,000 staff to over 8,000 now. We've also more than tripled our revenue in that period as well. So we've got fairly consistent revenue growth. Uh, and importantly, while we've tripled our revenue over that 16 years, we've also increased our margin. So we're quite tactical about where we seek growth, uh, that, it's, that it's only where it can enhance our margin. So we've increased our margin over that time as well. So, and we're, we're on track to continue that, that growth trajectory. So for a, for a 4.7 billion uh, turnover company to, to have that kind of growth, we, um, we, we believe we're, uh, we're, we've got the secret source sort of figured out in terms of how to operate, increase our productivity in our sector. But as you all know, the, the, you know, the civil infrastructure sector in particular is, has a reputation for being rather slow to adopt new technology. Um, the, the contradiction there being we have very stringent document control requirements around our construction operations on large infrastructure asset, um, assets, and in particular, defence. And where we do work on assets of national significance, you know, like, you know, um, like uh, broadband connections and airports and a number of areas like that, we have we have very rigorous controls around um, our records, uh, which we'll elaborate on a little bit further. So that's a quick snapshot of Fulton Hogan. I'm going to start by sort of showing what was at stake when we first embarked on implementing M files, sort of what the what the stakes were there and the challenges we were facing, then and then talk a bit about the journey over the last three years. So my title, Group IMS Manager, probably raises the question in your mind, what is an IMS? I'm not sure if that terminology is um, common elsewhere in the world, but that's our integrated management system. So if we pick a particular corporate function, like the people function, which is what we call our human resources, the people function, as an example, has a people management system. That people management system starts at the top with a bunch of policies and standards that outline what we seek to achieve, a bunch of processes, procedures, guidelines and work instructions that inform how to deliver those policies and then a whole bunch of forms, checklists, templates and databases uh, that, that are used to, to gather information <laughs> to, to fill those processes and deliver on our policies and standards. Below the line we have the records which are evidence that we're delivering on our people management system and that all of this is in service of a number of uh, certifications. We've got six different ISO certifications. Our NATA accreditation is a certification for our laboratories, which we operate. FSC is Federal Safety Commission. We've got a lot of regulations and consents we have to comply with. But that people management system is one of multiple management systems. There's a quality management system, a health and safety management system, and so on around the organization. Each function has a management system that governs its operation in the business. Those management systems then interface with each other. There's a bunch of overlapping processes, business processes, where they transact between those management systems. And it's that integration between all of these management systems that, uh, that is our integrated management system that governs the entire way that our business operates in all aspects of our work. That integrated management system is critical to delivering on our client requirements, meeting you know, our policies, fulfilling our policies and meeting uh, those regulations and standards that are required of us uh, in the delivery of our works. Our IMS, uh, back in 2018, when we started on this journey, was subject to a, you know, a, a couple of major risks. What we call our shadow IMS, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is uh, uncontrolled copies of, of, of key records and key documents um, falling outside of our, you know, our, our, our controlled environments where people were 
you know, whether it's hard copy documents or or documents being copied off into other platforms and losing that assurance that our people are working off the, the current version uh, of a process. Uh, and also what we nicknamed our dark IMS and our deep dark IMS, where we had content getting replicated out into cloud drives and personal drives. So that was a, that was one of the main challenges we were seeking to address uh, back at the beginning of this journey. So we, we set out to, to identify uh, a solution to this issue in, in, in tandem with an issue around fragmentation of our systems. Partly due to that growth by acquisition, we had a lot of different siloed platforms in operation around the organization. On the left-hand side, we had you know, a number of different cloud file sharing solutions where you know, folks were replicating content out into these cloud drives for access in the field. And on the right-hand side, we had a bunch of third-party solutions that were in use around our organization as well, largely in the collaboration space and quality control space. Uh, we had a legacy system based on Oracle UCM um, that was not uh, integrated very well with our, our file shares or our, our SharePoint implementations. And the, really, the only integration we had was some minor in integrations between our a number of Salesforce applications in the business and, uh, and, and Oracle UCM. But that was where we were in 2018. So we so we then set about sort of solving this sort of range of challenges that I've just outlined. The first thing that, that became apparent when we went to market to look at alternatives was that all of the various solutions that we that we looked at fell into sort of three main categories. And I hope I'm not stating the obvious here for all of you, but in the first column here, column one, we had our we, what you might call it pure records management systems, which is where we sort of put iManage, LaserFiche and M files, uh, which would deliver on our requirements around records management. But in the second column, we had a whole bunch of what we call project collaboration systems is the terminology we use in our markets, which are really targeted at the construction sector. And they provide things like drawing registers and, and con control of correspondence between us and our clients, defect management, and a, and a bunch of construction specific workflows. And in that category, we had uh, solutions like Teambinder i2, which is a, a, a solution from RIB in, a, out, of, out of Germany, and Aconex, which is now owned by Oracle. And then in the third category, we had a bunch of other solutions that didn't really fit neatly into either of those groups, like SharePoint um, and, and a bunch of file sharing solutions that didn't provide the records management, didn't provide the collaboration, but potentially with a number of plugins and a great deal of work could possibly have been sort of shoehorned into some of our use cases. But in going through this exercise of assessing all of the solutions in the market, what became apparent was that M files was the only solution we could identify that uh, ticked all of those boxes in terms of records management and with some configuration could also be made to deliver on our project collaboration needs, you know, handling things like, you know, drawing control, uh, digital engineering, um, our transmittals or our correspondence with our clients and our defect management. So we then we then set about um, configuring our M files implementation with the with the support and assistance of Team IM to deliver on all of those needs for our organisation. We have we quick point here in that in that procurement phase we set up a selection panel internally with representatives from our New Zealand and Australian businesses and our group IT function <coughs> from each the red numbers here <coughs> they scored one of the four options that were on our shortlist the lowest and the green number is where they scored that option is the highest as you can see M files and team IM were almost unanimously the highest scoring solution in, out of that selection panel these are all operational managers in the business uh, we also had a Gartner reference call, which which um, presented M files in a favourable light as well. So we then embarked on this this journey. We set about then uh, collapsing a number of these systems into M files, uh, consolidating all that all of these platforms, and fleshing out that integration. So we've now got an eco ecosystem of solutions um, where we've got um, consistent information architecture around those various platforms in our business. Some key stats. In the last 30 days, we've had 900 unique users in M files, uh, and on average, each of those users uh, is executing 16,500 events uh, over that 30-day period. So you can see we've got we've got a number of roles in our business where they basically now live in M files. They come in in the morning, they log into M files, and they're transacting 
uh, all day in M files, managing drawings, managing correspondence, managing quality, uh, lot, what we call lot management, our, our lots or our inspections and testing and whatnot records uh, in M files. Uh, on our business case, uh, over the uh, over the three years that we've been uh, implementing M files within our business, we've probably seen around, and this is an estimate, it's very hard to quantify some of these savings, particularly time savings for our people, which don't directly convert into a, a bottom line saving because it, you know a time saving um, is more an indirect um, cost benefit where you're freeing that 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 employee up to focus on higher value tasks. But roughly $2 million in direct cost savings in our business, largely through uh, phasing out and collapsing and decommissioning a number of other systems and, and consolidating everything in M files. But what's important here is the the real the real benefit of M files for us has been indirect. Uh, a benefit that's extremely hard to quantify. Positioning our organisation as, as, as a smart contractor with, with smart in-house solutions that help us win work, uh, reducing our quality issues in our operations. Uh, in our sector, the, it's a very high risk sector in terms of quality where, you know, where quality issues can escalate quite quickly. You know, just a couple of quick examples in, in my time in the organisation, I've seen uh, one example on a, on a, a seven kilometre a steel pipeline that we were working on where a single two inch weld on that seven kilometers of pipeline um, delayed a project by three months. I've seen another example on a concrete pour on a bridge where you know, a, a failure to pick up an issue in, an, in a single inspection on that pour resulted in $20 million worth of rework. So it's very hard to quantify the, you know, the, the cost savings we've achieved by better management of quality is one example. But um, I'm going to talk about that. I really want to come back to this, uh, this, this headline issue of building a corporate brain, because that is the real benefit that we've discovered of this, which is uh, very difficult to quantify, but is an order of magnitude greater than the direct cost savings we've experienced as an organisation. So here's where we are now. M Files is now sort of the nexus of a number of platforms, and 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 it's the nexus of all of our information management, in that it's it's both the integration point between uh, a bunch of financial records, our asset register, and our invoicing, and our receipts and expense uh, processing out of uh, Oracle and Freedom. It's also the back end repository for a, a, all the records out of a, a whole range of about 35 Salesforce applications we operate around our business. It's also directly the repository and, and user interface for uh, all those project records, drawings, notices, test results, and so on. So M Files is really sort of the, you know, it is the brain, it's the corporate brain now that's, that, as you all know, is accessible, very flexible in how it can be accessed as well, which is uh, something we're just beginning to really leverage the, the mobility in M files as well. So this is the point around building a corporate brain. The, the, the epiphany, the real discovery over this journey for us has been the value of having all of our business records and information in a single repository, not just, not just having those neural connections like a brain, those neural connections that you derive from having a consistent information architecture, having consistent metadata across all of that information. And more importantly, the, the other key thing that makes a brain function in addition to neural connections and pattern matching that allows, allows you to match one set of stimulus uh, to, a, to a response, but also the building of a corporate memory. A lot of those third party solutions we were using previously, we would stand up the solution for a project We'd operate that project for two or three years, and then we would archive that project information off that platform, and it would go and sit on a disk on a shelf. And if we wanted to interrogate that project history, we'd have to go and rehydrate that repository yeah, and go and search it and stand it up on a server with it, with the cost that comes with that. But also, um, it, it was it it wasn't enmeshed with our other data the way that it is now. And, uh, and we didn't have that perpetual record of all of our project information. So that combination of neural networks through metadata and, pro and, and, and corporate memory through having the real-time searchable live project history means that our people can now go and interrogate in real time all that project history, uh, past projects, past work for clients we've done before, the past work for suppliers, contractors, all of those relationships, all that correspondence, all the designs that have been done before, all the costing information that has been done before to inform our ongoing work. Uh, so so that that's how M-Files has become our corporate brain. And 
the trying to quantify the value of that is, is you know is almost insurmountable and to quantify the value of it into the future there's an exponential increase in the value of that repository over time as we add more information to that brain and it opens up a whole bunch of exciting opportunities for us in the future around artificial intelligence and using linear regression to pattern match you know, successful projects versus unsuccessful projects, um, successful partners and contractors and suppliers versus unsuccessful partners, contractors and suppliers. So it's 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 very difficult to quantify the value of that that corporate brain. And just on that point on supply and demand, one of the challenges, as you'll all be aware, in knowledge management, is you know you try to build repositories of knowledge and anticipate all your future knowledge needs. And balance that against being responsive and make that either self-service or, or have a facilitated knowledge services that deliver on uh, the demands of our people in terms of knowledge uh, in, in real time. Uh, MFILES now does both. It is both our, our supply of knowledge, but it's also much more responsive in terms of meeting a demand for knowledge with that having that breadcrumb trail through the 360 degree search and the metadata. So in terms of what's next for us now, in terms of the implementation of M-Files, we're continuing to, to, to uh, collapse other systems into M-Files and we're working on some new features like dynamic branding of content on our joint ventures and alliances in, in some of our uh, co-branded subsidiaries, um, working on some improvements around hard soft parent-child relationships between items of content to, to maintain consistency. But I really want to focus just quickly on uh, th these two that I've highlighted here, our new quality assurance application, which we're currently working on, and our tender management system, uh, which I'll cut over to uh, two uh, short videos that where we're going to get demonstrations from Fletcher and Duane on those two applications, which we're currently now uh, implementing in M-Files, uh, making use of M-Connect, which is a part of the service offering from Team IM. On that note, I'll uh, cut straight across to these two videos and hope uh, fingers crossed that the audio uh, is is loud and clear. Hi everyone, my name is Fletcher Thomas and I'm a solution architect at Team IM that helped Fulton Hogan streamline their quality assurance process at construction job sites using our MConnect field services platform. Civil construction companies measure progress by tracking completed QA inspections on everything that is built. Although we automated the creation of the task for each QA inspection in M files, the actual inspection is still done on paper. The client needed a way to digitize some 600 unique paper check sheets with a regular need for one off modifications on a per project basis. Furthermore, the engineer must be able to complete the check sheet on site, often with no internet connection. A record of the check sheet must then be captured and saved into M files for compliance. This was a perfect fit for our M Connect Field Services rapid app development platform. Online offline data sync, single sign on and mobile app builds are available out of the box. Within the app, we have built a custom module for client administrators to recreate check sheets in a standardized digital format, including the ability to specify project specific one offs. Engineers in the field are then assigned tasks to complete specified check sheets, even while offline on site. When complete, the check sheet data is submitted into M files via our integration and automatically converted into a client friendly PDF format. Now let's review the actual app. On opening it, we see a list of tasks that are currently assigned to me, the field engineer. We'll get back to that soon, but for now, let's look at the check sheet builder. Here's the builder interface used by administrators. Check sheets are standardized into a series of one to many tables, each with any number of columns and rows where each row generally represents some task or data for the field engineer to, to complete or record respectively. Columns in the table may have various data types, including date, initials, free text comments, images, and more. The check sheet template is saved in a JSON format for ease of extensibility and may be copied for project specific modifications. Now back to my assigned tasks. Now let's take a look at a mobile view of completing a check sheet in the field. This task is for inspecting a drainage line install. I can read through each row or task, initial, which automatically fills in a date and add optional comments if I would like.
As a part of completing the check sheet, I can capture a photo and then attach it. Finally, I can submit the check sheet as a record to M files. In M files, the check sheet has been submitted as a document record related to the task converted to PDF and automatically classified with all of the correct project related info based on the task for which it was submitted. As a result, it may now easily be found in M files as a record of proper drainage line install. So that's so a couple of key points there from Fletcher's demonstration of our quality assurance application. We were managing our quality uh, our quality controls within M files previously. The, the the real sort of um, paradigm shift here, or the or the the quantum leap in terms of uh, how we manage quality using M files now, is the is the ability for the guys out in the field to uh, to actually capture directly into M files from their mobile devices uh, those quality inspections. Uh, so, so those 900 users you saw in the last 30 days that are all effectively office-based or project office-based, this now allows us to take this out into the field for those field workers as well and directly capture their input into, into M files. I'm now going to move to a second demonstration of the, the parallel project we're running at the moment around tender management, and uh, and you'll be hearing here from uh, from Dwayne also from Team IM. Hello everyone, my name is Dwayne Parkinson. I'm one of the people here at Team IM who's helping Fulton Hogan implement and leverage M files along with the Team IM tender management module. Fulton Hogan chose this solution because it delivers a significant strategic advantage when compared to using rigid third-party construction management software. So let's take a closer look at how Fulton Hogan is using this M files solution. When delivering a project, Fulton Hogan will often contract with other organizations for a package of work that is outside their main area of business. For example, if there are trees that need to be removed as part of a road construction project, Fulton Hogan will create a package of work to have organizations that specialize in tree removal bid on and ultimately complete that work. Historically, managing this process was done using email and third-party applications. Due to the uncontrolled and inconsistent nature of email and the inflexible nature of the third-party construction solutions, the process required an enormous amount of effort to successfully manage. In the end, much of the information about the package of work resided outside of Fulton Hogan, making it very hard to ensure compliance with regulations, especially on public works projects. This slide shows the major components of the tender management solution. Fulton Hogan has an extensive project management system already in place within M files. The tenor management module allows a work package to be created for an existing project. The work package is sent out to selected partner organizations to give them an opportunity to bid on the work. The partner organizations review their opportunities and have the ability to collaborate by way of controlled, secured communications. Any changes to packages are formalized, updated, and communicated to all organizations consistently. Key dates are managed. And finally, the work is awarded. If we take a look at how the Fulton Hogan project team sees this in M files, we can see that the standard M files relationships are used to represent the package of work. Each package contains references to documents from the project that define the work to be done, as well as national documents, which are things like standard corporate policies and legal notices that are shared between all packages. When a package has all of the documents necessary and organizations have been selected to bid on the work, opportunities are then created for those organizations. This makes a frozen in time copy of the project documents and automatically generates customized invitations using M files template technology. The entire package is reviewed, allowing documents and opportunities to be updated until it's finalized and approved for sending. The Team IM tender management module sends customized project specific notifications to all bidding organizations. The emails notify organizations of their opportunities and take them to the Team IM M Connect portal where they can review the information. MConnect is a highly configurable and customizable web portal which is tightly integrated with mFiles. It provides non-mFiles users with the ability to interact directly with mFiles package data, including workflow functions such as accepting or rejecting an opportunity. Creating questions and uploading documents are critical parts of the process as well, and they are built-in components of the mConnect portal. Most importantly, everything that happens in mConnect and mFiles is contributing data which is reported against in Power BI and contributing to the Fulton Hogan corporate brain. 
So a couple of key key points there from from Dwayne's excellent, very very rapid demonstration of our tender management solution, is that uh, this allows our suppliers and contractors to directly interface um, with our project environments as well in M files of using M Connect. One of the key benefits here, going back to the corporate brain, is that by collecting all that pricing information as well in the pre-contract phase before we go into a project delivery on a construction project all that pre-contract work around um, building up the, the pricing for the project is accessible then in delivery phase of the project as well so so that that those neural connections that metadata is not just spanning all the various activities that the business does it's also spanning time that temporal connection through the life cycle of a project so in delivery phase of a project they can access that that historic information in the pre-contract phase on the same project. So look, I've, I've covered a lot of uh, information there around, around what our journey has been like in Fulton Hogan. We're, we're obviously very, very proud and very happy of, of uh, what we've achieved with the help of Team IM and M Files. Uh, at this point, I'd like to hand over to Volker Scharberg from Team IM to, to talk to you about recommendations to partners. He can obviously speak to this better, but before I do hand over to Volker, I just want to touch on this first bullet point. We would not have been able to achieve what we've achieved with M Files in our organisation without the trusted partnership between us and Team IM. Conducting our relationship with Team IM in a way that we act as partners and, and, and Team IM is able to propose solutions to us in real time that, that we can then look at and adopt. A lot of what we've done as an organisation has actually been on the advice of Team IM uh, as a partner. Um, also, we would not be able to do multiple projects, multiple streams of work at the same time, and a mixture of agile and just-in-time development and some more waterfall-style sort of uh, structured projects, sub-projects, without having that 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 trusted partnership relationship with Team IM. On that note, Volker, I'd like to open open up to you to to share the rest of these recommendations with our guests. Thanks, Marcus. Um... Hi everybody. So partnership to Team IM is really about focusing on the customer outcome. And what uh, we, we've been working with Fulton Hogan for more, more than 14 years. We understood a large part of the business, but that was a relatively old and aging system. But we did understand, you know, in principle, what it was trying to do. Yeah. Um, the first challenge was uh, that we came across, however, um, was that in order to uh, win the hearts and minds of the executive, we had to build a self-funding program of work. And I believe that this is the key to partnership. If we can identify uh, manageable deliverables that return some demonstrable return on investment and then keep going, uh, by continuing to deliver those within the framework of a program of work, and you make sure each of those deliverables returns and uh, you know returns or provides a return on investment that's measurable, then your program of work, you know, by definition is going to succeed. Um, we were replacing an existing system at Fulton Hogan, so you know the initial project was was waterfall. But I believe a key to our success has been what we call a minor works program. And that minor works program is really designed to continue to maintain the system. You know, one of the things that I live in fear of is that uh, we've built a construction management system for Fulton Hogan. And that construction management system, every, t every major project chooses which system they're going to work, whether it's Aconex or Procore or the system that we've created. As Marcus uh, alluded, you know, the real value to bringing all of this processing in-house is obviously standardization and the building of a corporate brain. Uh, but it is still quite daunting when you're going up against billion dollar companies like Aconex um, when, you know, in order to execute the project and execute the, the project management steps of the project. We were very fortunate to you know, assemble the right team um, I'm going to call out a particular young lady, Jade Brown from Fulton Hogan. She uh, knows what she wants. Uh, she's pretty good at getting what she wants. And um, we were very fortunate in that she became a vociferous you know, advocate for the construction management system that we were building as well as uh, M-Files itself. 
And then lastly, obviously, in order to execute a multi-year, multi-million dollar sort of uh, program of work that's really seeking to uh, replace and digitize a number of existing systems uh, and cloud uh, platforms, as well as really sharpen the saw in terms of you know, lessons learned and best practices, is that executive buy-in. I can remember uh, presenting alongside Marcus to the executive uh, of Fulton Hogan and the CFO, Rob Woodgate. Uh, he said, You've, you have my support, but you have to turn all of those other systems, those gray systems that were on the previous slide, uh, you have to turn them off, as in off, off, you're responsible for the decommissioning. And I think, you know, that's an example of where we took an interest in achieving that outcome, simply because the executive had made it very clear that's how we're going to get measured. And uh, I think, you know, continuous communication. Uh, Marcus and I typically talk on a weekly basis in terms of, you know, just curating that program of work and making sure that uh, the funding cycle and the um, and the business outcome are all cohesive uh, in a manner that you know our team knows what we need to do and uh, Marcus can continue to show value to the organization. Thank you very much. <laughs>